We're back with Sohala Corton telling this amazing story of growing up in Tehran, moving to Canada, new world essentially, yeah. and just feeling really lost. Mm -hmm. Well, one day you meet a young man by the name of Scott, and he starts to talk to you about Jesus. Mm -hmm. He did. Yeah, we were 15 in high school. And I remember the first time I saw him, there was so much light exuding from him. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, who is this kid? Like, I got to get to know him. And it wasn't anything like having a crush, but it, there was this, I was drawn to this light mm. that I'd never seen on anyone before. And so lucky enough for us, every class that we had that first year, we were in the exact same class together, except our homeroom. And we, be, we had a friendship. We mm. based it on a really good, solid friendship, getting to know each other, talking. And he started telling me about Jesus. And I got really excited. Mm until my Muslim friends found out mm. and they just put the lid on it, they shut it down and they reassured me how awful it was for any Muslim to convert, that there's no hope for you, that you're not allowed. It's a huge sin against God. And so I talked to Scott, I said, listen, I love, I love our friendship, but you need to respect me. I'm a Muslim, you're a Christian, and I, we just need to keep it at that. And so he stopped. And it wasn't until a year and a half after that I finally realized, hey, I'm missing something. Scott hasn't talked to me about his Jesus for a long mm -hmm. time. And it scared me. Hmm. And What scared you about it? It scared me because I knew he was full of so much life. Mm. And all of a sudden, that life kind of stopped mm. that I was receiving. Every time he spoke about Jesus to me, it kept me going. Mm. There was this excitement inside until I noticed, hey, it's gone. And so I started talking to him more about it. I started talking to my Muslim friends about our faith. And literally, eventually, one day, my Muslim friend said, if you convert, you're going to burn in hell. Wow. And my Christian friend said, if you don't convert, you're going to burn in hell. Mm. And so I found myself in this place of, God, what did I do? Mm. I'm burning in hell. I don't like this. Mm. And I had a really honest, heartbreaking conversation with God as I walked home from high school, weeping. And he revealed himself to me. And I went home and I wept and I cried and I woke up. And before I, I slept, I took a nap. Um, I, I cried out to the one true God. Mm. I said, I just want to know the one true God, whoever you are, I just want to know you. Mm. I'm tired of feeling dead inside, like my prayers aren't being heard, that I'm just praying to the wall. Mm. And I fell asleep and I woke up and it was like this jolt of electricity that went through my body and I heard his voice and he wow. said, it's now or never. Wow. You need to make the decision, it's now or never. And I called Scott and we had a quick conversation. He thought I was pranking him because we love playing practical jokes on each other. But I convinced him like, no, this is serious. I really want to do this. I've made up my mind. And the very next day at school, we walked into a, a forested area and I gave my life to Christ wow. then. And it was the most incredible day of my life. It really was. And you knew that this would be at a huge cost, that your yeah. family would not be happy. Mm -hmm. Tell us about dinner time and what would happen once your family knew that you were a Christian. Yeah, well, it, it became really difficult. And back then, I didn't realize how much it would hurt my parents. Yeah. Being a parent now, I can understand as I'm in their shoes. But they would have dinner together, my parents with my siblings, and I wasn't allowed mm -hmm. to sit with them. So I would wait till they were finished having dinner. And when they were done eating dinner and the table was cleared, I'd go in the kitchen and whatever leftovers there were. I'd the sit leftovers. There. The leftovers, wow. yeah. I'd sit there and I'd eat it. And it wasn't because they were mean. Mm -hmm. I understand that part. They were just so broken. They mm -hmm. were so hurt. They thought I had completely gone behind their back, which I had. Mm -hmm. um, my dad had said, I wish you would talk to me about this. I would have helped you. I would have taken you to classes and taught you about the Quran mm -hmm. and what Islam really is about. But my mind was already made up and I'd fallen in love with this new Jesus and I couldn't turn my back on him anymore. But it was really difficult. But at the same time, now being a parent, I could see their pain and I could see it wasn't intentional. They just didn't know how to deal now with a child who's completely turned their back on a faith that they followed for hundreds of years yeah. through past generations. You're now married to said yes. Scott. <laughs> yes, that's how we are. We've been married for uh, almost 14 years wow. now. Yeah. And what was it about that Jesus? What is it about that Jesus that you decided that, yeah, I'd have to give up a family, I'd have to give up all of those things in order to follow him? You know, it's, he made me feel whole. Mm -hmm. He made me feel like I finally belonged. I belong to this family now. My whole life I was the black sheep trying to find my place, mm -hmm. and he showed me my place. 
-hmm. He showed me that I have a place with him right in his heart, right on his lap to sit with him, to laugh with him, to cry with him, that he really is my best friend. Mm -hmm. You know, even in my darkest moments, I could sit and cry and it's as if you and I are sitting here talking to each other. Mm -hmm. He's that tangible to me. And I can't, I can't turn that back for anything. Mm -hmm. I can't give it up, you know? Thank you so much, Sohala. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. Oh. I, I love what Sohala said and I hope that resonates with you. There is room at the table for you as well. There is room at Jesus' table for you as well. If you don't know him, if you've heard a lot about this Jesus guy and you want to know more about him, please do call our prayer lines. They're at the bottom of our screen. 1-866-273-4444. You know, maybe you've made a mistake in your life. Maybe you've wandered off. Um, know that Jesus is standing there literally with open arms, just wanting you to say yes to him and he will embrace you and take you in. So please do call our prayer lines. They'd love to get you connected. connected. They'd love to pray with you so that you could accept Jesus into your heart. They'd love to get a Bible into your hands and connected with other Jesus followers that love him just as much. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 